What's up guys, welcome back to the infamous project. We have a new project here to announce. This is David's little LX notch, little pocket rocket. I don't know, we'll have to come up with a name for it. But David is a local guy here in Hutto, Texas and clean little notch in here. And there's definitely no shortages of white fox bodies in the shop. I did not plan for this. It's just the way that it worked out. So if you look underneath the hood here, Got a nice small block, Cobra intake that's been cut open, extrude honed. We got the old school Powerdyne blower. I'm not sure what the internals are, but we got Aeromotive rails. We got a whole bunch of nice aftermarket upgrades here, and it's actually running on a Holley Terminator X. Shaved out engine bay. One interesting thing about this car, it was actually a Coyote swap car, I'm told. You see the sway bar mounts have been actually chopped right off. We got the poor man's wire tuck going on here and pretty solid little car. But the thing that's the most interesting about it, it actually has a narrowed rear end. You can see there's some huge meats on the back here. 325-30-19. And of course the car was mini tub before because it would have been a nice little race car. Got the rear mount battery tray, cage coming through, reinforcement welds, you name it. This car has gone through some iterations and has had probably a pretty interesting life. Corridor windows don't look too bad. The paint is okay, generally speaking. I think the whole car was taken apart when they did it. The one big problem is though, this door, it won't close properly. And you can see here, the fender's into the A-pillar, door's pretty much into the A-pillar. So we need to do some body panel alignment in the worst way here. You can see all the flaked paint here from the door probably catching the fender. The hood has flown up at some stage, got some Bondo in here. So I gotta do some panel alignment, but most importantly, Whoever welded in the cage and did the door bars did not account for armrests. So needless to say, you cannot run armrests on your door panels with this setup and the car is just so rigid because it's not just door bars, guys. It's actually roof bars, pillar bars, everything bars. So name of the game, cut the cage out. He's gonna leave the hoop and everything going towards the rear, but everything else is gonna come out. We're gonna be doing some body panel alignment and just looking over whatever else that maybe we find in terms of gremlins or things that need to be fixed or swapped up. Maybe get them some new window tint in the back here. But that's pretty much the scoop on David's car. It should be hopefully a pretty straightforward quick one. We'll get him some armrests back in the doors. We'll get his doors opening and closing properly. And anything that's been cut up or hacked, he might have to go for a new carpet He's got a new headliner in the box there. Funny enough, they put headliners in boxes, which was uh, pretty interesting to see. And he's got a new set of LX taillights. So these guys are gonna be coming off. And uh, yeah, we'll get the car all cleaned up and uh, ready for the street. You can see here, I'm already looking at like this. They don't even have the fender bolt in there, but we'll handle all the stupid little things like that. And uh, for now, it is time to pull this interior out real quick and need to pull it out. So allow us to be able to cut the cage out properly. So let's see how fast I can get this interior ripped apart. The timer starts now. is out console is out found lots of unexpected at this point surprises um, interestingly enough they ran the window switches up over here and this guy so you can see here what's normally 
in your driver's side door armrest. They had this creatively wired up over here, which I guess uh, A for effort. And had to disconnect some of the uh, Terminator X wiring here. Some of the wiring was looped over and around things, so I had to cut this one wire in order to be able to get the dash out. Gonna have to fix some connectors on the headlight harness, because of course those were just kind of pushed in there and they weren't, their clips have broke, which is pretty common this day and age. A lot of cut wires that we can clean up here. And what else was interesting? Yeah, maybe I'd say 75% of the necessary hardware was actually holding stuff in place. Otherwise it was missing or the wrong hardware. You can see more cut wires here, which we can clean up, but actually have really good access to this bar coming down here. So we'll be able to most likely cut down in there pretty clean. We're not gonna be able to get it you know right up so it looks like factory again but we'll get it in a way where the car will be able to flex again and you know won't have these hitting you when you get in he'll have armrests back in place and it'll give us an opportunity to do some cleanup in here maybe a little bit of kill mat try and mitigate as many squeaks and rattles as we can if you look in the back here terminator x computer sitting back here which um, looks like pretty pretty good way of doing it, hiding it in the back there. But you know, it's all these cut and exposed wires like this that ultimately, you know, you don't want exposed wires hanging out. So we'll clean all this stuff up, see if ultimately that is supposed to be reading to the atmosphere or not. Double check that. We'll go from there. Now we got some good access to cut what we need to cut and found a couple gremlins in here only three nuts holding in the seats um, improper hardware on the seat belts so a couple safety concerns despite having a roll cage around you um, super things like you know only one nut holding on passenger side mirrors so on and so forth so we'll try and get everything all buttoned back up together here after we cut the cage out so with that said Let's uh, let's start cutting. All right guys, so that's gonna be an intermission right there. Got most of the passenger side, well, the bulk of the passenger side stuff is all cut out. Just need to do cleanup things and I'm out of blades, I'm out of discs, I'm out of everything that I need to be able to clean this up, same way that we did here. So you can see, can almost not even tell that there was a crosser here. Be able to clean that up once there's a good coat of paint on there, you won't even know. So we'll do the same thing up here. So you had to cut it in the center there just to be able to maneuver this whole piece out. And I'm going to cut this down flush here. And I'm actually surprised. I managed to get the sawzall blade down in here. And I got that cut off pretty close to uh, the base of the rocker there where they had, had that welded on. So pretty happy with this. This will get cut flush. Like I said, we'll do more cut off wheel flappy disc work. And then get to move on to the driver's side. So I figure it's not easy work guys, you know, pulling out the whole interior and um, covering everything up, it's dirty. Um, make sure you wear your safety equipment, safety glasses. I was wearing my sunglasses. And um, yeah, I did get my finger a little bit with that flappy disc and uh, make sure you use the guards and you should probably wear gloves. Anyways, 
Uh, we'll come back in tomorrow, get the rest of this cage cut out, and then all the dirty work will be over. And then we get to move on to the clean work. dirty job but I had to do it so you see we got door bars cut off got the upper rails cut off everything sanded down nice and flush like can do some final you know high build primer on that scuff this thing down and um, spray it great opportunity obviously with all the interior out managed to get the rear plastics out and around so that was kind of a good thing funny enough it looked like they were originally black plastics that somebody sprayed gray which i've never seen someone go that way before but needless to say they're in the back of the lightning i'm going to take them home and try and pressure wash the gray paint off maybe black panels that someone dyed gray and the dye is flaking off so hitting it up with the pressure washer you can see the other one looked pretty much like this and now it looks like that. So this came out of David's notch there. And um, I gotta say, this is a first for me. It's always gray going to black, red going to black, blue going to black. But uh, not so often do you see original 90 through 93 rear coupe plastics in black that someone has sprayed a different color. In fact, the only person I think that I've seen do something crazy like this, I think Donkey Fix It sprayed over black for red at one point. Not 100% sure, I'm calling them out right now. So while well, there's some of the cage, Ricky took the other door bar as a cheater bar for his shop and I took a section of pipe and I have it as a cheater bar sitting on my toolbox back there and yeah we'll keep that around you never know when you need some tubing so got that there next thing that i want to tackle with the car is to try and get this driver's side door sorted out so if you guys see the door is really close to the pillar here as is the fender and the door doesn't even want to close properly and if you look real close like right here this inner side of the door it's actually catching the weather strip like really pre like inward. I might disconnect the battery. Oh, we got some new Godzillas that just showed up today. So stay tuned for some Godzilla content. Godzilla content is always fun. Let's move some stuff out of the way here. So I'm actually gonna leave the door latched. Okay. I'll leave it latched for this process. While I loosen some stuff off here, probably going to loosen off some of these fender bolts as well. See if we can't pull that over a little bit. And uh, got the jack. In case we do we need to open the door up. Let's see what we're working with here. There 
we go guys, all welded up. So we'll be able to thread that in and that'll hold everything in place. So we're gonna go ahead, get some washers, try and shim this guy out. And hopefully we can get our door lined up. So one nice thing that happened, the bottom side of the door got pulled in down here. The fender will be able to maneuver. That one bolt up in here isn't even on. And these are all loose to try and get our line better here. And there is gonna be a little bit of a line here because this hood has flown up and there's been body work that's been done. So we'll do our best to Try and close in on the hole, but at the same time maintain our body line. Still moving that door way up. All right, so I think I've got the alignment of the door and everything good. The reality is these pins, there's play in them. And it's really hard to believe because everything looks like they've been replaced recently unless they messed up the bushings or I don't know what. But anyways, guys, I'm not gonna bore you with this. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, get the, I think the pins are good, uh, but those bushings clearly are not. So anyways, I'm gonna deal with that real quick and hopefully, this door will open and close nice. That one's actually broken. All right guys, so this is one of those moments that you know, you're coming off a pretty frustrating time. I battled this door. I've got four hours into it. And that is to make sure the door pins are good because they'd been replaced, but the bushings were already worn out. One was broken and trying to get the alignment right. And we had the broken off bolt and the one retaining plate. So between all those things, Time adds up. So, you know, where you think, oh man, I can get so much work done in a short amount of time. It just takes something like that to literally eat up half a day and ultimately be quite expensive. However, we now have, and don't mind the trim here, we have a door and a fender gap. That's pretty much as good as it's gonna get. There was a couple chips and some things here from before, but Things are looking pretty good there. Things are looking good here, as good as they're gonna get, because remember the hood flew up there. And most importantly, we have a nice gap down along the backside here and a door that now opens and closes with new door pins. All right, driver's side is done. Ended up messing with the striker a little bit more and the latch a little bit more and just taking time, adjusting all the different points. We open and we close. 
really not that bad. I'm happy with it. Now, unfortunately, gonna have to mess with the passenger side. Not today though. Now it's time to go drink some beer.